processes and dynamics associated with tropical cyclone formation, structure and evolution of mesoscale convective system over a warm tropical ocean, and observing system experiments study using ensemble carbon filter. Please, Dr. Ojeki, time is yours. Selamat siang, apa kabar? Kenalkan nama saya Moteki Kusaku. My name is Kusaku Moteki from Jamstek. I'd like to choose a topic from my previous studies uh, that that is to propose a high, uh, one hypothesis of the eastward propagation of the MGO, uh, a kind of scenario, and. Uh, that is based on the uh, observation study from uh, Shindi campaign. It, it was uh, conducted seven years ago. And first of all, Shindi 2011 is uh, a field campaign over the, uh, that was conducted over the uh, Central Indian Ocean. And uh, many of you, uh, many of Indonesian people, you know. Uh, as name of, of uh, Harima project over the uh, American continent here. And we have so many intens intensive radio stations, uh, additional stations here, and uh, su uh, successfully captured the uh, MGU pro propagation for three times during the uh, four months from the uh, beginning of October to the end of the January. And uh, we, uh, now we took a uh, first MGO here. At this, uh, this first MGO is offset at the 21st of October. And uh, before that, before studying this, uh, the biggest, maybe, many of you know, the biggest question of this MGO is like this why does it propagate eastward? against easter winds at slow pace speed less than 10 meters per second much much slower than carbon, equatorial carbon wire so it, this, this is like a, a, a just a sample MGO uh, like this and it's pace speed at less than 5 meters per second and uh, there we have um, we have classic theories to uh, try to explain such uh, slower phase speed. Uh, one, uh, exa for example, one is uh, one of the most famous uh, theory is uh, wave disk based on the wave response, uh, considering the surface wave uh, surface friction effect. And also uh, recently we have another year. From, uh, that is called the moisture, moisture mode, and uh, but however, mo most of these uh, kind of uh, previous theories needs uh, uh, special condition within the equatorial region, and those, uh, and I just wonder, can it completely isolated from the subtropics and the extratropics or mid branches, and. Uh, I don't think so. But there is some influences from the exotropics to the ectotropics. So this is simple, my, my simple motivation. So I took a, uh, I took a case study for, for the eastward propagation scenario. Uh, as a, the first MGO during Sydney 2011 is a card, uh, it generated on uh, October 29th. And it it moved, uh, it moved slowly at face, at face speed of six meters per second, and uh, please look at the uh, uh, usual form diagram diagram of car, uh, IR like this. And the onset date is twenty uh, first October, and. Uh, Black contact is the uh, western wind speed, and it follows ju just follows the uh, propagation of the MGO. Like this. And also, uh, but uh, although many 
so many papers on these cases uh, are, are already published, but nobody describes on this uh, extratropical cyclone to the south, just to the south, is there. And uh, in other words, I want. I just wondering why that uh, the drawing and cycle following the extratropical cycle is synchronized with the MG propagation at the completely same phase speed at six meter per second. Right. So. I just here. I just propose it. Uh, is it uh, as like the is the extratropical cycle a triggering factor in some kind of well, MJ propagation? So the hypothesis is, is very simple. The extratropical cycle uh, some triggers the MJ propagation. Please note that. The extratropical cycle ex ex doesn't e cannot explain the whole of the uh, propagation mechanism, mechanism of the MGO, but it's, it may some it may be some uh, triggers. So questions is here: uh, are there any coupling processes be between the MGO and extratropical cycle to the south? This is my motivation. And uh, to see that uh, whole uh, region of the uh, tropics and subtropics, there is a uh, problem. So I use the normalized geopotential height anomaly. Usually we, uh, we, we define the anomaly from uh, the, some average, but uh, there is a, a when we use the geopotential height, uh, that that is uh, highly dependent on uh, that amplitude difference is highly different, uh, high, highly sensitive to the ratio. So, in the tropics, the amplitude is very very small, but uh, uh, in the subtropics or mid latitudes. Uh, the amplitude of pressure is much much larger, so we we should normalize it. So, for, so I use the geopotential uh, uh, variance between 40 to 140 degrees east between the here this longitude and zone, and uh, we define a kind of a norm, geopotential anomaly from this basis. So, uh, that, that is from uh, Japanese 55 year, year analysis that is called Gerald 55. And also, of course, uh, uh, this data set is, includes all the intensive observation, uh, uh, intensive observations from Shinji and Harimau. So, using this, uh, I just make a Hoffman diagram of the geopotential height, normalized geopotential height anomaly for the equator and uh, off equator to the south and to the north. So please look at the uh, red counters. This is the OLR and uh, low OLR uh, and uh, showing uh, MGO propagation here. And, uh, Right side panel is uh, is for the 10 degree south to the 30 degree south, and you you can see that coherent signal of the uh, lower uh, uh, negative anomaly of geopotential height uh, that is completely coherent coherent uh, coherent signal here, but in but. Uh, but uh, we don't have any coherent signal in, in the north. So we, we have uh, the coherent signal only in the southern hemisphere uh, between this MGO propagation and the 
extraterrestrial cyclones, uh, uh, negative, negative jet potential heights. So, this look, looking back to uh, uh, horizontal distribution of jet potential height, uh, normalized jet potential height anomaly, uh, we can see that. Uh, Remarkable extratropical cycle here, and also MGO shows that uh, negative geopotential height. And it makes uh, a kind of a large scale, large scale of uh, trough, a kind of meridional trough, right, like this. And uh, in other words, we, uh, behind, behind that, uh, we have a uh, large scale of meridional bridge uh, appear to the west. So, uh, considering the be, be, between this uh, range and the trough, there, there should be the uh, pressure gradient force uh, that, that, that should be intensified the western winds here and, uh, of course, in, in behind the cold front. So, it is natural. Uh, under the consideration of the pressure project force, uh, western winds uh, is, is easily intensified uh, behind the MGO and uh, of course the cold front here. So do, please look at the uh, uh, ascending motion itself. This is a uh, particle pressure, uh, particle pressure uh, omega. So you can see that uh, uh, junction of uh, uh, now the ascending area of MGO and cold front is combined here around here. So it it should be a, a, it, it it is kind of a coupling and uh, uh, is associated with the big uh, uh, trough system. Otherwise, uh, Dr. Rotegi, three more minutes. Three more minutes. Uh, please look at the, this. This is a uh, southern cold advection against by, by cold colder colors by vector and southern green vectors. And this colder, colder advection uh, intrudes into the tropics and it makes a higher geopotential height anomaly. So, uh, 60. Six days after, uh, the pair of Russian, uh, major Russian and trough shifted eastward by pre pressure gradient force, entirely uh, uh, with covering, uh, covering in the subtropics and the tropics. So, so let me summarize that, that my hypothesis: if covering uh, uh, Coupling of uh, pre pressure system of, uh, uh, in the subtropics and the tropics uh, occurs. Uh, eastward propagation is natural by the, naturally explained by the pressure gradient force between this trough and ridge. However, usually uh, when the MGO develops uh, uh, there is a masculine high to the south and a new Russia high. The, this is a very stationary system. So the condition to be uh, condition to the extratropical cyclone introduced into the, the subtropics is the decay of this uh, mass, uh, the decaying of the masculine high. Uh, so an extratropical cyclone can travel into the south subtropics. After that, uh, the, uh, the MGO was helped by this uh, as well propagation <coughs> by the uh, pressure gradient force. Like that. After cold advection intrudes into the subtropics behind the cold, cold front from the extratropical cyclone, and it makes a higher uh, geopotential height anomaly, it is natural. So, pressure gradient force uh, much much intensified between these. 
the, uh, an NGO can, can propagate its work. So this is, this is my one um, hypothesis. So it, it, may some, uh, uh, it, it may give some uh, ideas for the next field campaign and uh, uh, please, please note that whether extratropical cycle uh, is, uh, is located in the MJ to the south in the MJO. Uh, in fact, I have some, uh, some cases I found other than this, this, uh, this Cindy case. So thanks very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, any question or participant?
you to speak to the last speaker of this plenary session.